hay cruisers after a very soggy California rainstorm week. We were so excited to see the sun poke out and we thought we would take a little drive into the country, bring you along with us and do a vlog live here on the side of the road, basically. <laughs> so if you're watching our social media channel this week, you did see that we got a giant, giant storm a uh, category five storm in California that brought us about seven inches of rain where we live and a lot of flooding. We're okay, our house is totally fine. Thank you all so much for your concern. Everybody who saw our pictures on Instagram and Facebook was really sweet, wanted to make sure that we were okay. We were totally fine, but I've never seen my rain meter overflow before. It was nuts. So needless to say, it's really nice to be outside. It's 55 degrees right now, so I'm a little chilly and my <laughs> fingers are a little bit purple, but hey, we wanted to get out of the house, so hope you enjoy this slightly different um, background today. We have been very busy. I just looked down at our YouTube channel and realized we've done like five videos in a little over a week, starting with our flight edition, packing tips video, to our live stream, which was so much fun last Saturday, and we can't wait to do it again, to our behind the scenes live stream. We had a Valentine's Day giveaway announcement, and then we put out our awesome subscriber, uh, excuse me, subscriber inspired, that's a mouthful, uh, cruising with kids episode that PJ really helped us out with, and we even posted posted PJ's um, tips with kids on our website. So we have been really super busy. I'm really excited about everything that we have going on. We've been doing a lot of fun stuff this winter and I'm very stoked to announce, drum roll please, yay, that we have our next live stream, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. As long as nobody gets sick, as long as nothing bad happens, it is Saturday, February 25th, which is this upcoming Saturday at 12 noon Pacific time. We're hoping that that allows me a little more time to get ready after the gym. I'm sorry, I have a 9.30 Pilates class that I really like to go to every Saturday. And that lets me have about an hour to get ready after I get home. And hey, maybe our friends in Australia can have 30 extra minutes of sleep and join us because we missed you guys. I know everybody was um, saying, oh man, I didn't wake up in time. So Australia, come hang out with us in our live stream blog. Um, we're really excited to do that again. If you missed the vlog concept, go check out our hour long vlog from last Saturday and let us know what you think about it. It was awesome. It was rapid fire questions. Everybody was helping out um, in the comments and it was just absolutely amazing. It was something we've been wanting to do for a really long time and I wanna thank all of you for showing up. I think probably somewhere around 400 people were there during the actual live stream part of it so that was exciting we have some really cool videos coming for you guys we were sent an awesome product from a company that we think very highly of so if you're not subscribed already to our cruise gear channel get over there and subscribe so that you can get all the latest updates on stuff that we like to review for our cruises and we are doing kind of a public service announcement type of an episode on MDDS. You may remember us talking about it in a vlog a few weeks ago, Maldemarkmont syndrome, which is that really, really intense post-cruise or post-travel um, awful motion sickness that people get. The sun is really coming out, sweetie. Did you see it? I'm, I've got sun in my eyes. It feels so good, but I'm squinting a little, so hopefully... Um, it's not too bad and hopefully the flies that are buzzing around me will stay out of my face. I think they like the moisture. Anyways, uh, another thing we're gonna do next week in the vlog or maybe even the week after is I wanna share with you guys what it is that I've been reading. I don't have time to read very much. So one thing I do is I get books on tape. I had lunch with a friend a few weeks ago who said, look, I know you like to cruise and I am reading the coolest cruise related mystery book right now. So I ordered it from the library. It took a few weeks to arrive, but I am so hooked, you guys. I'll tell you the name of it soon. I'm also gonna be telling you about some other things that we're reading coming up soon. I wanna try something different and find out what you are all reading as well. So get ready to talk about that next week or the week after. Now it is time to answer questions from all of you. Thank you all so much for being patient. I know that these questions, some of them are a little bit older and and um, it took us a while to get to them, so please forgive me. Our first question comes from Joey H. It's about Alaska cruises. Ala uh, Joey might want to do an Alaska cruise with the family, wants to know what to expect, as well as which cruise line has the best food. Joey. Any cruise that you go on in Alaska is probably going to be amazing. There are so many good lines up there, but Princess and Holland America do it the best in my particular opinion, and those two lines have the best food. What you can expect on an Alaskan cruise is <clears throat> to wear layers. <laughs> You're gonna need to prepare for rain and sun um, and maybe even wind all in one day. So plan to pack a lot of layers. It's super, super important that you do that. You're probably going to want to plan to save a little bit of extra money for excursions as well. Alaska is expensive due to a lot of reasons, partially because 
it is on U.S. territory, and these tour providers have to provide, have to be insured, and that's just simply more expensive. And it's also a very popular destination. People from all over the world come to Alaska, so there's more demand, thus things are more expensive. So set aside money for your shore excursions. That's a really good tip. And um, enjoy Glacier Day. Be sure to watch our videos, our Alaska playlists that talk all about um, what to expect on glacier days and watch our Alaska playlist. That will be some good advice for you. Wendy Smith said that the Norwegian Jewel is coming to Australia. Yay! Awesome ship, by the way, Wendy, um, for the summer season. She wants to know if it's different from, say, Princess in the way that they do formal nights and things like that, or if it's more relaxed cruising style. Norwegian in general, and especially the Jewel, is definitely going to be more relaxed for you, Wendy. Freestyle cruising means that you don't have to dress up even on formal nights. They will offer them. Oh, here comes a car. Hello. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> um, people are looking at us like we're nuts because we have a camera set up on a tripod right now, and they're like, what are you doing? So anyway. Back to um, Norwegian freestyle cruising. There will be formal nights, but they'll be optional. So you will hear less about it than you uh, normally would. I remember on our Norwegian cruise, we actually had to really look in the newsletters and um, try to find out when those nights were, but they call them, I think they call them dress up or not nights. So you're gonna find that they're less dressy one of the things we saw on our last Norwegian cruise too was people, uh, especially men, they would wear Hawaiian shirts and shorts to dinner. It was kind of a, it was kind of a theme. Sorry, my hair is blowing into my mouth. Let me just move it. Um, and it's more casual for sure, but it makes for kind of a nice experience. It takes a little getting used to when you pack um, and when you're on the ship. It kind of feels weird at first if you're used to princess, but after a while, it's kind of nice. I remember one time we did not pack formal clothes um, for our cruise. We just decided to skip it. And we still went to the main dining room, I believe. I don't even think we ever went to the buffet for dinner, but you can do that. It's totally an option. So enjoy it, Wendy, and we can't wait to hear how you like it. We got an email from Jennifer, which I cannot answer. Hopefully someone here can. Jennifer McKenzie asks, looking for some advice on Ponta Delgada in the Azores. Has anyone been there and have advice on excursions or just exploring? on your own please help jennifer you guys I, I don't know anything about that place um imogene hodge wants us to know what is the best dining room for different meals plus for different types of cruisers like honeymooners families um with two kids and two adults now imogene's going on carnival imagination so i kind of want to answer your question imogene with that ship in mind. Uh, the best types of experiences I would say for families would be to enjoy the main dining room. It is relatively fast. If you take something to entertain the kids, the main dining room will be great for you. You could also go to the buffet, that will be fine. There are no specialty fancy restaurants on the Carnival Imagination. There's Guy's Burgers and the Blue Iguana Cantina, but there are no steakhouses or anything like that. So you're limited to the buffet and the main dining room and those other two restaurants I just mentioned. They're all going to be great with kids. Um, in general, for honeymooners on that particular ship, I would recommend the chef's table, which is a very exclusive event that is hosted by the chef and is a multi-course meal experience. I would not recommend taking your kids. I have an eight-year-old who's really well-behaved, but I don't even think he's ready for it yet just because I'm not sure his palate is quite sophisticated enough, for lack of a better term. So I think that would be my advice for you have a great cruise on imagination she's a fun little old ship we really like that ship um alan is weird said um i'm about to get married and my future wife and i want to know if you have any tips for our 15 night hawaii cruise on the star princess longtime viewer and subscriber thanks for the helpful videos well thank you alan we appreciate it tips for the star princess in general i've never done the hawaiian itinerary but um our 10 night on the star hopefully you've seen all the videos and all of our vlogs from our mexican riviera 10 night Ooh, it's really getting bright out there um it is a wonderful ship and the staff and crew are amazing. My advice to you is to take advantage of the activities. Everything from afternoon tea time on sea days, which is absolutely wonderful, to the wine tasting is just beautiful. I would also recommend that you go to the shows. I think they're getting some new entertainment on that particular ship and I've heard great things about it. So be sure to try things, get out, do different things. There's a wonderful Q&A session that some of the senior officers hold on um, a sea day, which is held in the atrium where you get to ask them questions and it's really great. So if you see that ask an officer type of an event, be sure to go to that. 
Also, on Cruise Radio, at one point, Doug Parker interviewed a cruise fever on his um, a Hawaiian cruise experience. It was on a different cruise line, but there's some kind of a an unlimited shore excursion package that you can buy over in Hawaii. So scroll through the cruiseradio.net podcast and look and see when you find that one that um, interviewed um, Cruise Fever and look for that package. It's an awesome one. We also have some tips from our subscribers this week. The first is from Justine Heitkamp. Hi again, Justine. Um, she said Norwegian is best for single cruisers because they have rooms called the solo studios for one person. Yes, that is awesome. We love that feature. You're right. More cruise lines need to get on board with that. Couldn't agree more. Jeremy E has an awesome tip, which I also think is an adorable tip. He says he puts his wife's shoes inside of his in his suitcase. Um, to save space. Awesome tip. Jeremy's a good, gives us good packing tips. And then Whiskey5JDA um, is someone who works in an emergency department and recommends that you get your prescriptions, your medical disorders, and all that stuff onto some kind of a card in your wallet or on something on the wall of your stateroom so that if anything ever goes medically wrong with you on a ship, somebody knows what it is that, that you need to be cared for, which I think is a wonderful tip. Now, I am so excited about this tip from our subscriber, Sam S. Sam gave us a huge list, you guys, of things to do in Grand Cayman. We get so many questions from everyone here on port and excursion ideas for the Caribbean, for Caribbean cruises. And I wanna read to you guys really briefly um, the list here, but I think I'm gonna try to somehow get these posted up on social media on our website from Sam because they're excellent. So here are Sam's Grand Cayman excursion ideas. A helicopter tour with Cayman helicopters, walking distance from the port, the Cayman Turtle Center, Seven Mile Beach, which I love this tip. If I go back to Grand Cayman, I definitely wanna do that. Seven Mile Beach is free and fantastic. Um, the sand is the best in the Caribbean. You can went right, rent wave runners, kayaks, beach chairs, and there's showers and restrooms and restaurants. So that sounds wonderful. Stingray City is, of course, another good one. Rum Point is another one. That sounds really fun, too. Look, sounds like you can lounge on the beach there at Rum Point. Cayman Crystal Caves. That sounds cool. Stalactites and stalagmites, right? And the Amphibious Bus Land and Sea Tour. Um, that one sounds really fun, where it sounds like the bus goes into the water, and they have underwater cameras, you guys, so you can see fish, the reef, and the shipwrecks. So that is awesome. If anyone's going to Grand Cayman, you definitely want to take advantage of Sam's tips. And I'm going to find a way to get them out there to you guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us on our little outdoor vlog. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining and I am soaking up all the vitamin D that I can right now before the rain comes back. Join us for our next live stream, 12 o'clock, February 25th, which is a Saturday, right at noon. Just jump onto YouTube and it will start. Hopefully you uh, will click the notifications bell on our YouTube channel to be notified of any new video that we put out. If you do that, you should get some sort of an email telling you, hey, look, Cruise Tips TV is going live. But I also post on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter about 30 minutes before we go live as a reminder. So if that's a better way for you to be reminded, that's awesome too. Thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to give us a thumbs up if you like this video. We always love your comments and questions below. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye. Cruiser of the week. <laughs>